Okay, perfect. So I'm going to start with the DXY on the day, on, on the daily chart. And um, I've redone my, I had a parabolic channel across this wing. And I think that's um, quite irrelevant at the moment because I usually keep channels on to see how many swings we've got and if they're ready to break out. So this this is clearly broken out and it's moving uh, downwards. However, we have reached a level of support and resistance here. Now, we're talking about the ranges. We're not talking about, even though I have lines, it's because my, again, it's, it's more minimal and clear on my, on my um, screen, but usually where there's a line on a daily chart, it's better to see it as a range rather than as a simple line. So I would, I would have a range of support and resistance where we are right now. And this would be level two. Uh, now, level two, um, we have the, the, the top formation, which in this situation is like, a, like an M formation or a triple top formation, however you want to you wanna call it or draw it. Um, it's, I'd say it's a triple top formation. Um, and then we have level two. Um, usually what we have between level one and level two is a back test. And I will show you on the Bitcoin and Ethereum charts how that happened. Now, I am going to draw a quick ref. I'm going to make a quick reference to a previous moment when the DXY dropped three levels so that we compare and contrast uh, that that time just just for this reference. So if I am looking at this for instance peak formation here So that would be level level 1 uh, here would probably be level two. And here it would be, let's say, level three. And we can see we can see that this has actually gone down one more level. So what I would do here is I'd put this down here for support. And I would move this a little bit lower. So level one, level two, level three. Just to, again, just to see the previous, how it behaved in a previous similar three steps down drop situation. Um, and I have, and I've chosen, I've chosen this swing because it, again, it looks like this is the swing and then we have the correction. Um, as opposed to, for instance, this swing and its correction. So I've, I've basically chosen the previous swing up. Of course, this is bigger uh, in size, but I don't, I don't particularly think that matters. What I wanted to see was um, if it back-tested the previous peak formation and it, and it didn't here. It just, it, what it did, but what it did is, let me, um, open this out a little bit more for you. What it did was it back tested the 20 on the daily. So um, here on the peak formation, it just went sideways. Here it broke it. And from then onwards, it kept on back testing and dropping, back testing and dropping. And it had loads of back tests, more so than, for instance, crypto would. Um, again, I'm not comparing the the, 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 the amount of back tests that D, the DXY does or the amount of swings because it has a different pace, a different pattern because of the steadiness of the currency basically and how it's connected to fundamentals and uh, the general economic situation. So it didn't back test the, the previous um, peak formation but what it did back test was the 20 on the daily. So what can we expect here? Now we are we are in a situation where the crypto world is facing um, the FTX scandal. Now there's Genesis and Grayscale that apparently have tweeted that they're okay. But again, there's a sort of murkiness and uh, how can I say doubt in, the, in, in, in exchanges and 
different institutions that were involved with crypto that are influencing negatively. So I'm trying to see if there's anything in the in the TA that I have and that I could read to show us a direction that this could go in. Now Bitcoin has broken the previous historical um, peak and it's not something that it would do. So again, Bitcoin is doing new things. Ethereum is, if Bitcoin is doing new things, Ethereum is even newer. So Ethereum is sort of like doing its thing as well, which is what they should all be doing because again, they're different assets. So they shouldn't go, you know, hand in hand, but they're all working together as, as, uh, as a class of assets. So I'm, I'm, I'm watching to see if there's anything in the previous DXY pattern to indicate if we have a if we're going to have a move to a particular direction in my opinion what we're going to see in the dxy is a back test of the 20 on the daily we've broken it we've clearly broken the peak formation yes we might not go up and back test the 110 slash 109 level um, again that might not be uh, that might not happen however uh, we we will see a backtest of the 20 on the daily. When will that happen? I can't say for sure, but what I can say is that the stochastic on the daily is maxed out at the bottom here. We have several bullish divergences on my indicator, and again, the regular RSI is at the bottom. So sooner rather than later, we're going to see the DXY um, backtest the 20. And now I just got the idea of counting to see. So from here, where it broke it, it took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 23, three weeks before it tested the 20 again. So here we are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, we're on day 12, let's say 13, maybe I haven't counted correctly, I'm terrible at counting. Um, so um, let's say day 12, day 13, things might become a little bit more accelerated, but anyways, we should see a big move in the coming week, I would say, uh, a week to 10 days, we will see the DXY do something. Could it drop uh, another level down to the next level of support if this line of support breaks? Yes, it could. Um, it could. But um, I don't think it will until it back tests the 20. So if I'm looking at the previous uh, patterns where it dropped, it back tested the 20 once, dropped, back tested again, dropped. Again, we had uh, weeks of dropping and then back testing and drop. So we need to have that back test. The 20 is quite far away from price action. So it, it will take a bit of a push to get there, but it will eventually get there. So long story short, I, um, I redid this, uh, this chart to show us where we are on, on the DXY levels. And I believe we've done a level two at the moment and we've yet to do a level three now level three can be i put i put i anticipated this here uh, but it could it could be somewhere around here as well so we'll see we'll we'll, we'll see where it gets where it gets to form some sort of support and that will be our level three um, that would be the previous peak. That's why I chose it there. And if you extend it, you'll see that it's got a nice uh, support with the peak in 2016. So that would be the DXY with a possible up move coming in the 7 to 10 days. And that's that would be where I believe um, the crypto market will be as well, because I think we are uh, on our way to make a third leg down. So both Ethereum and Bitcoin are preparing to make another leg down. Ethereum has a little bit of a different anatomy because it's broken the previous low um, and reach, when it reached the 800, I think it was 25 level. But Bitcoin, um, uh, while Bitcoin was holding its uh, 17,000 support. So I think that over the next seven to 10 days, we'll have our answer about the direction. I believe the direction will be down. 
I'm going to keep my short uh, positions open and DCA on the retraces and follow it down. I Again, I don't have any technical reason to believe that this is going to retrace up. And if I do see any signs, I'm going to start using stop losses to secure profits and allow it to reverse without losing too much. But I don't believe that we will actually see a, um, a reversal. Now, I'm going to start with I'm going to start with um, Ethereum because it's a little bit more complicated to to describe. First off, let's see where we were where we were on our weekly trades. So we've anticipated we have anticipated um, these. I think we've anticipated all these moves. But what 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 I haven't anticipated was the range because I believe that the range is going to keep uh, to the superior line of the retrace swing, whereas the 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 range actually held at the at sort of like the midline or three quarters of the range that I believed it was going to move in. The retraces were also quite shallow. Um, for instance, from this swing down, both XRP and Bitcoin gave us a nice 786 uh, correction, whereas Ethereum stopped initially at the 05, went up again, and then went down to the golden pocket. The next swing, this baby one here I call it a baby one but it was quite it's it's quite nice in in percentages again it gave us a golden pocket uh, correction um, there we go if we take again this whole thing as a swing but it's really hard to to um, measure it on the maybe on the 15 minute we can see it it did give us a 786 um, again Ethereum was in a in a smaller space than I anticipated. Um, I believe that the volatility will will hold itself, and that was honestly that was my bias. Because if I look, if I look again, um, it, it's by it's my bias and it's it's my mistake, honestly. Uh, because if I look at the previous swing here, so we had this massive drop, we had the retrace swing. And then we stayed for four swings in a in a way smaller uh, in a way smaller um, range. When we do the trade setups on Monday, I will be very mindful of that. From now on, I'll be really mindful of that after big moves because I I would like us to have um, how can I say the tighter the space we ha we have mapped out the more we can plan those moves and not wait for a bigger move. Because this is what happened, for instance, with one of my XRP trades. I was waiting for a bigger move to the upside and it didn't happen. Um, and I think, again, if we, have the, the, if we have the trend lines a little bit tighter, we can place limit orders a little bit more frequently. And if we get them, great. If we don't get them, Again, that's okay because we have our stop losses in place. But what what we wouldn't do is we wouldn't be, for instance, missing a swing because we don't think the swing is over. So if we look at the previous pattern, and I, I noticed that with Bitcoin as well. Yes, the retracement swing is nice and, and um, juicy in terms of the range. But then it narrows down its range and it breaks that range occasionally. Here, this 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 was a crazy consolidation swing. Like this was a this was a mad in terms of in terms of swings, this was the king of all consolidations. Like it had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I counted this morning, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. That's how many I counted this morning as well. So 14 swings, huge, huge, very long. Um, so now, now I believe we won't have that same consolidation because things are a little bit more severe in terms of fundamentals. Like we have exchanges crashing. We have, uh, again, uh, Grayscale hasn't tweeted anything in a week and then came back today and saying everything's okay. So I think everything's just coming to a very 
uh, unsettled place, fundamentally speaking. So I don't think we'll have 14 swings up and down. However, I do think that we might be in, depending on what happens tomorrow. Now, tomorrow's going to be a big day in terms of moves because if Friday finishes, and you heard me say that last week, if Friday finishes with a down move, we're going to continue that down move. If Friday finishes with a panic move like this, we're going to have another panic move like this um, at the weekend. I believe this is this one happened happened at the weekend as well. I remember one of them, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This was it. This was the panic, panic sell-off. So Friday finished down. Saturday had a bit of a retrace. Sunday pushed down for the whole day. And it was a massive spill on Sunday, especially, um, I think, uh, Asia start, when Asia started. Again, 12% drop in a day. Massive liquidation. If you got in a long here, thinking that, oh, I'm getting a great position. This is a W on the four hour. We're going up. We've done step one, step two, step three. Everything's okay. There you go. You have a 12% drop over one day. You probably don't, like in, in 16 hours, you're back at your entry point. If you don't have a stop loss, you'll be liquidated. So it's it, uh, that's what I anticipate is going to happen um, if we finish tomorrow with a panic move. So if there's news tomorrow um, about another disaster, something happening, and we finish the Friday New York session with a drop, that's going to be huge um and that's going to continue in 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 the weekend and that's going to give us our level three and our level three is 1000 but again i'm going to look at the levels on the daily and the levels on the daily will be uh, indicating more of a 500 dollar ethereum now i want to be a little bit more organized because um first i want to tell you um how, how we mapped the, the trades out. So we've anticipated, or better yet, I've anticipated all the moves. I've, I've anticipated the correction, I've anticipated the lift, and I, uh, I've anticipated another swing down. So all the swings are here, three swings. But what I haven't paid attention to is the narrowing of the range. So the, the, the how narrow the range is. However, in terms of trading these swings, even if Monday, for instance, doesn't give you, um, if on Monday you're you're doing what I did, you are planning your ranges higher, and then you see that the next trade doesn't come, and you and the next trade doesn't offer you this mountain peak range because this is what we were expecting on both Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'm gonna remove now the arrows because they served only the purpose of reminding me what the swings were. If you if if Monday doesn't give you a super high um, mountain peak, but it offers you this double top formation on this support and resistance line, take this as a short signal. This is a uh, this is a slightly lower high, the green one here, and this is a perfect short entry. Uh, you could have had you could have you could have placed a 702 here on the one hour swing. And followed it down and again you would have had this on um, Monday it didn't come to this level again I hate it when it does that it's really annoying when it does that but it does do it so if I'm to move this to the support line here look this swing didn't get to there this swing didn't get to there and these two didn't get to there. It's the same swing, but they didn't get there. So you will have some consolidation swings that don't get there. What I tell you all the time is you see a double bottom. And I, again, this is a four hour chart. If we are looking at the one hour, you see a double bottom on the one hour. Take your profit. Watch for the new entry. Uh, you see a double top on the one hour. Do a you can either go in if you if that double top is done or if you see this put a 702 with a stop loss and then follow it down 
so where I would put the stop loss here a little bit above here this would wick me out however I would get this one so yeah I would be wicked out I would have to wait for this but then I'd put a I'd put a 702 on two this one there you go a little bit above here and here it is this 702 at 1266 would never be challenged so I have a couple of um, um, trading trading um, ideas to keep in mind I, I don't want the trading strategies to keep it keep in mind here so the first one is um, make, uh, to make the range narrow more narrow narrower I think it's narrower after the first swing the second one is um, watch for double top dot 702 entries there were a lot of good entries uh, both for Bitcoin and Ethereum this week um, again Ethereum was more generous with the with the ranges Bitcoin not so much it's almost like a stable coin at the moment um, and most importantly take your profits at the double bottom Now you can you can do two things here. Uh, it depends it depends on how how much time you have on your hands. So you can take your profits and uh, you can let's say you've entered a trade here and you see a double bottom here. You can take your profits at this double bottom. Watch for another entry, which if for instance this was a, a great double entry here, um, a 702 here. Uh, it was hit today. So you're following it down. You can do two things. You can either take your profits here or you can secure your profits with a stop loss. So let's say you've entered on this swing with a 702. Um, you see it coming down and you put your stop loss above the 55 EMA on the one hour. And you say, okay, if this breaks this 55 EMA, I'm taking my profits. You're still, you're still giving it space to move down so from there to there it's a 4.6 percent and again it's I'm being very again very conservative here um, it's a 4.6 percent of the 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 overall eight so you're leaving a little bit more than 30 percent on the table but it's still a, you're you're giving a good trade more space to move while securing profits so that's again that's what I would do placing a, a stop loss here allows you to have the best of both worlds or you can take your profit full profit here go in again here and follow it down with again a stop loss above the previous peak here so that you don't um, you don't get caught in a swing up because that swing up let's say you entered here I remember it was 12 12 was really easy to remember so let's say you entered 12, you don't want to get caught in a 40 45 percent again swing upwards with minus 50 percent in the red so again you could play this both ways um, I, I am I am pro profits <laughs> so I would be taking my profit here waiting to find another short entry with the 702 and then following it down so that's what I would do because I think we are again we are in this we are in this situation we might not take so long to consolidate so rather than a 14 a 14 swing consolidation um, I believe we might be somewhere around somewhere around here but in a different layout this is where I believe we are because we've had this drop there it is so 
here's the peak here's the peak we've had the first drop I believe that this is the big drop um, this one here was the consolidation here and now we are somewhere around here waiting for the next step down so again it's uh, here we only stayed from the 15th of September to the 18th of so only three days uh, 10th of November 17th of November so we're we've been here seven days already seems to be longer but maybe again same same but different we'll see I again I I I, I hesitate in in making any approximations because I can see the, res the resemblance between the, the two stages but it's taking a little bit longer now than it took here but that's that's where I believe we are I don't think I don't think this is you know a bear trap and I don't think that you know liquidity will start <laughs> flooding into the crypto market after you know people getting ruined for life and they're you know them not being able to access their coins and their um, wallets and you know the second largest exchange falling to bits so I don't think that will happen so this is just a consolidation going back to my initial point I am pro taking profits because I don't want to be in a 14 swing consolidation without any profits there will be another entry there will always be another entry if you're giving me over the space of 20 hours a double bottom structure I will take that as a rejection and then I'll watch it for another double entry that is my strategy while saying that I am not applying my strategy um, in this particular context for um, XRP the trade that I'm in at the moment in XRP I'm letting it run at least to uh, a 33 level because I believe again XRP moves a little bit more violently so if you hear me or Roy saying okay we're letting the trade go it's it that's the that's how that coin works and for us it's worked um, this one so I, I I didn't I didn't you know take profit and go in here I just waited for the whole drop to happen um, so that's that's the that's that but that's XRP with ethereum we could be in this situation so I am for profit taking um, again there will always be another another back test another entry and if you miss something like this I, I showed you last week you can always find a double top on the one hour here it's a quadruple top on the one hour you will see it on the 15 minute follow it down double top on the one hour follow it down double top on the one hour follow it down double top follow it down double top down you get the point so I am all for taking profit when it comes to ethereum's levels because you could be in that sideways level forever and ever and ever so there will always be an entry if you prefer for instance um i know nathan is in the trade and he's keeping it open because he's somewhere around here i believe 13 10 is his entry point so if you are right here at the top of the swing top of the food chain excellent you can keep your position and just watch this play out because it's great time in the market so as traders we need to we need to put loads of hours in just to get used to the movements of the market in various stages we have the drop we have the lift we have the consolidation when you have a trade you are invested in watching the market at different levels of focus and concentration so holding a trade without actually going in and out of trades allows you to to see the, the movements of the market and to um, to assimilate them with less stress than going in and out watching for entries and exits so and uh, Roy and I used to do that at the start when we were trading the four hour the four hour swings and they were getting us into trades that lasted 
weeks and months. So we were watching, literally watching every every swing on the 15 minute or the one hour. And that got us to um, internalize the movements of the market as it was at that at that time. So it it we removed the pressure of finding entry points and exit points on a daily basis because we already had a good entry and we just let that trade play out over four weeks. I remember I had a, a four four hour trade that, that took four weeks and we were watching it twenty four seven. Literally we were doing shifts watching it because the amount that we had in was that big so we were constantly day and night looking at it and without the pressure of finding an entry or an exit you look at the swings differently you literally see the flow of them and you get used to it you get used to the back test you get used to to um, the the ranges and also you get used to the unexpected because you will see that there are you have all the technical yeses for swing to go one way and then it goes the other way around because the range is expanding. So that's another thing that happens on a Friday most of the time because Friday is, the, is, is when the books get settled before the end of the week. So you will see that a, um, a range might get expanded to the upside or to the downside. And that's the unexpected. So again... If you are at the top of the range here and you have a stop loss a little bit above and you're willing to let that play out, it is highly beneficial for you as a trader to watch the market without the extra pressure. That's that's the, the point that I was trying to make. It took a while to, to get there, but I eventually did get there. So take your profits at the double bottom or four if you have... A good position watch the trade without the extra pressure of finding an entry or exit and that is that is also a great um, element of discipline to have to keep your position so you will see that in your toolkit as a trader as you have probably seen uh, Roy and I we trade right now we are trading uh, we are trading a daily swing on XRP we're holding our short position open for a long time I'm not looking for daily entries on XRP anymore I'm not going in and out of trades anymore on the daily levels I'm watching the daily levels for my long-term trade to see if it comes to its uh, completion on a particular day what would be the daily levels on that day but I'm not watching for any short-term targets because the move that we are in right now is a daily move. It's a long-term move. So as a, as a trader, you'll have this skill in your toolkit. And I don't have to tell you about it because, again, I've, I've, I've told you how to trade the channels or how to trade this, the, 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 the four hourly levels or the daily levels. And you know now what are the signals for the short-term trades. Now we're no longer in that short-term territory. We're in the long-term territory. And it's good for you to develop the discipline to hold the position open. If you know you have a great position, hold it open and let watch it play out because it's very rewarding to see a long position come to fruition with, um, let's say, a 15% or 20% or 30% times 10 profit. You know, you're making 300x. 300 300% uh, 3x uh, in one trade and it is very rewarding so and financially if you've DCA in the meantime you can make more so again I wanted to tell you about the discipline of that not just not just the the daily entries and exit because those are very treacherous at the moment again ethereum's more generous but uh, uh, Bitcoin is a little bit tighter in the range okay so 
I don't want to waffle too much because uh, I know it's I, I do I do have that tendency. So here we are with Ethereum. We have uh, why am I saying that the story is a little bit more complicated with Ethereum? Because Ethereum hasn't yet broken its June low. So here it was, 800, I said 825, it was 880, 870, it doesn't really matter. So first we need to see Ethereum break this low and then head for a lower low. So that would be a third level down. I have a daily wedge here. I don't believe we're going to get here. In By here, I mean in this space. Unless something disastrous happens fundamentally. So if we hear of disastrous news, then we might be going into this space quite soon. If not this week, next week. Again, this is a time bomb. This cannot go on forever and ever. Look at the space that we're moving in. And again, I'm going to start being more conservative with the ranges and because I'll be... I will be there anyways letting you know if we're doing something crazy because I'll be watching the charts. So if um, this is the range that we're in, I'm going to take the local support and resistance line. There it is. So I'll say between 11, 1170 and 1280, 1290, between 1170 and 1290. So this would be our weekend, Friday and weekend range. It's a 10% range. You can't really ask for anything better. It's it's a great range to trade. And again, if you can find a, uh, if you can find and watch for an entry right at the top of this, of this range, that would be absolutely phenomenal. Again, you can put a limit order somewhere around the top here at 12.90 with a stop loss above the previous high, maybe here at 13.15, maybe even here if your pockets are a little bit deeper, but that would be a very deep stop loss. That would be a 50% stop loss. I wouldn't risk that much of a stop loss, to be honest. I'll just put it a little bit above here because if it does want to break this line, it probably wants to go up and back test the 20. And then uh, it's worth waiting for that move to be done. So yeah, you will be losing 13%, but then it'll give you the extra 35% on the way up because maybe it won't stop at the 20. Maybe it wants to go a little bit above it and again there will be like a 10 an extra 10 percent 10 15 percent so what i'm saying is it could go higher than that extra 35 percent and it's better to give your stop loss away and take it on the way down i know you know what i mean don't need to over explain it so let's see the um the hourly levels the hourly levels we are still in level two and I've narrowed the range down uh, between 1270, 1280, and 1170. So this is our weekend range. I'm going to put this one here. And this one here. Okay. Now... Uh, we are at, um, we are still without any sort of support on the one hour. So I don't, I don't, I don't see this going up without any sort of support. Um, could it go up from here and maybe back test the 55 one more time on the one hour? It could. It's looking it's looking very suspicious to me at the moment. If I am to find sort of like a pattern, it would be a uh, like a dodgy triangle pattern with one swing, two swing. Oh, this is odd. This is just looking very odd to me. I can't see anything more than a big M here. This is to me the spilling pattern of this. But let's say 
we're keeping this line as a divergence line. So if we see this divergence line being broken, we might be heading up to the 1270, 12, let's say 1280. I'm gonna move this a little bit higher. I won't be so stingy on this, there we go. Okay, so the first two possible trades that I see here would be either up or down. So if I am to look at the more, the more natural movement would be up towards the 1280. Because we've almost reached the bottom here this the fact that it didn't reach the 1170 to me means that the bulls are having a stronger control and they're not letting it drop so hard so that might be it so that would be the more natural move based on this rejection however the trend is down the trend is down and it's a pretty dominant trend down and i can't help but Put a down target here and I have I am not surprised at all to see that this matches the previous drop at 1070 not surprised at all if that happens tomorrow that would expand this range, which again is something very typical of Fridays. Fridays will expand the range. They could expand it upwards towards the 1350, or they could expand it downwards towards the 1170, or <laughs> they could expand it both ways. Sometimes on Fridays, not sometimes, most of the times you have two trades in one to the upside one to the to the downside and they both expand the range so that the weekend has more space to move so this is these would be the two most um most likely moves to me the most natural one would be to the upside because of the rejection however due to the fundamentals the most likely is to the downside so if i were personally to trade this i would go for a short After this, if nothing crazy happens this weekend, I am pretty sure we're gonna range sideways. There's no point mapping the sideways out. Um, I could put a little squiggle here. Let me put a little squiggle here for the love of squiggles. There we go. And I will make it orange. Um, and I'll 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 I'll, <laughs> I'll post a comment tomorrow as to what this squiggle is <laughs> in case we don't remember. Uh, so this squiggle would be sideways after this this range is hit either to the to the top or hit either at the bottom here. So after this move completes, we're gonna have again some sideways in the same range. I'll keep you updated on the daily now. If tomorrow something comes out and it's super duper crazy. Now, Elon Musk has said that there are three coins and he's promoting Ethereum, Bitcoin and Doge. That could happen as well. Like we don't, I'm putting my bias to the side and I'm looking at this and how easy it would be right now for the market makers to just pump this whole thing out of proportion and give us another 20 or 30% swing to the upside and by doing that liquidate absolutely everybody who is shorting that could happen as well however to me if the more the more likely move is the breakdown to the downside now these are just my hourly levels these are just the hourly levels level one level two level three on the one hour structure on the daily the uh, on the daily the levels are a lot deeper the levels go to the 500 600 dollar ethereum so if we break the previous low here at 1000 the next one would be the 8880 if we break that we're going for the 600 it's as simple as that 
it's it will be a bloodbath we'll we'll wake up in the morning asking ourselves what happened and there will be it, the the move to a six hundred dollar ethereum will be quite fast because there are a bunch of orders there already waiting to buy in at that particular price because it's a super discount price for a coin that was once worth almost five 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 grand five for four thousand and eight hundred so that was that was um th that's my idea so the first trades that i see is is out of this structure out of this accumulation there's definitely compression happening right now as we speak it's been moving in this tight space it's gonna burst out either to the upside or to the downside if it goes up it will come down and if it goes down it will come up a little bit we're still going to be ranging as long as we're not breaking the previous low nothing massive is going to happen when we break the previous low you'll see me going oh my god we've broken the previous low guys keep your positions open and uh, if you're not in a short position watch for a double top and get it so that's the kind of uh, urgency that will be in <laughs> in my dialogue if something like that happens, my internal dialogue. Um, so that's that's it. That's it. That's all I, I want to say without any extra waffle and uh, ideas about Ethereum. It is a little bit tricky because, again, it hasn't broken the June low. So we have two levels that we need to watch for. The 1000 and the 880 once those are broken we're we're coming down really really fast and personally um i am um i'm 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 i've got a target of uh, 25 for xrp and if i were in a short position in ethereum i would have a target of 600 just in case conservatively so that would be it uh, and then i would let it i would let it play out um, that's 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 the that's the weekend and that's the week so there was plenty the, for me there was plenty of self-reflection in ta in terms of uh, the ranges and getting caught in the range because I anticipated the moves very accurately but the range of the moves um, was more shallow than I expected and it wasn't their direction it was just the the size of them and then the second thing that I want to tell you was about the profit. And then the third one was about the, the trades and the trades will be ranging up and down. Um, without any breaking of a previous high or of a previous low. I'm not even discussing the, the breaking of the 1350. Of course, if we break the 1350, this proves to be a W formation and we're going to head up to backtest level 1 at 1450. That would be likely. Uh, if the 1350 is broken but I don't see Ethereum going up let me tell you how much that would be 11% to the 1350 could it do it it would be exceptional yes it could but I don't I don't think that's the likely move I think a break upwards to 1280 would be possible so sorry I'm really sorry it's uh, almost midnight here no sorry it's past midnight here and I'm um, my brain's getting uh, uh, sleepy, but um, I hope I'm making sense. Let me know if you guys have any questions. 100%. Thank you. Awesome information. You're very welcome. JD, you're still a, you're in profit, right? A little um, I, I'm in a very, very small. I took profit from the last short I was in. Okay. Um, and then I got in one last night that was right at like 12.15. Yes. How's the short? Um, it was like kind of right where that low really logo double top is at. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm kind of just holding it out to see kind of where we're going. Um, yeah. anticipating that we may drop again lower, but, um, yeah, kind of just, kind of just watching where it goes. Mm -hmm. I'm curious like where I would place a stop loss in this instance. Um, cause I mean like I do overall feel like the market is going down. I mean, just with all like the fundamentals and the, like overall direction of things, but um, I don't know if it'd be best to like. 
I wouldn't have place, a close top five. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. No, I would keep where we are right now in this in this tight. Uh, that's an excellent question, because if you had an entry point at let's say twelve uh, yeah, eighty, right. I'd be like put a generous stop loss above this and you know hold out because you're at the at, at the edge of the range but you're in the middle of the range so to say yeah <laughs> so i wouldn't i wouldn't put more than 10 percent above this uh, so where i would put my my stop loss above the the peak here to pre the previous tokyo peak at 12 26 i'd put it at 12 let's say 27 yeah. So about ten percent, not more than ten percent, where we are, because if if this breaks that, then it, yeah, it and you don't want to get caught in this mess. Like why it's yeah. for ten percent getting caught in a fifty percent stop loss liquidation battle, not worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah. So that's where I would have the stop loss, and I would let it play out. Um, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna go up because it tried to break the daily open and it failed. It's holding the M2 right now, which is a level of support. I would have rather seen this uh, below the M2, but at the same time, it hasn't broken the pivot point. So let's see. Sydney right now has started and has started with. A lift. Generally, the the move at the start of Sydney is the opposite to where this is gonna go. Um, Woo! Yes. <laughs> 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 what we don't <laughs> what we don't want to see is the breaking of the previous uh, the previous peak. We don't want that because that's yeah. gonna give a little bit. Of, and you know, you can let it play out, and you can let it. Let me let me switch this trader's reality so that you see uh, the levels, and you can let it go up to again. This is a daily channel here that has the line here, the twelve seventy. Let it get again to the top of the range. Let it do its swing down on the one hour or the fifteen minute. Put the seven o two. Get another entry here and follow it down. It's. It's this this trade is definitely worth a ten percent stop loss, but it's not worth a fifty percent stop loss battle. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Yeah, I was debating because like I do feel like it's going to head up to that like twelve seventy area again. Mm -hmm. uh, like, should I just close it now that I'm in? I'm in like I don't know, like a three percent profit or something like that. And just and just not take a long. Awesome and wait for that to happen, or yeah, you could do put a ten percent stop loss. Yeah, absolutely, you could do that as well. You could do that as well. Like to me, this looks like it. It wants to push down one more time before it's gonna head up. But you're you're perfectly right. If it hasn't gone anywhere over the past one, two, three, four, five, six hours, I would, yeah. If you don't want to, if you don't want to pay that that ten percent stop loss, that's okay. You can close it and then watch it. And when it hits, because I believe it, it is gonna go up one more time before coming down. You can catch it there at the top yeah. and then uh, head down. Uh, or again, it's it would be it would be it, it. This is a good range to long as well. Like I I I prefer to short only yeah, in these situations. Um, because XRP is very very volatile and Bitcoin is has terrible ranges, but Ethereum has good ranges. Um, but you don't have you don't have an alignment before the one hour and the fifteen minute stochastic at the moment. So they're all they're all towards the top. Fifteen has almost reached the top on the stochastic. And the one hour is at the top as far as I can remember. Yeah, it's coming up again. Yeah. So uh, the entry the entry for the long was somewhere around here. Yeah, right, double bottom. The double bottom, exactly. Yeah. But again, it's it's the more risky it's the more risky option because it just um, it, it could it could it could push down again. You'll 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 have to put the stop loss in and make sure you're secure yeah. either way. Yeah. 
Yeah, probably I for, for me personally, whenever it's like a downward kind of trend or channel like this, I, I stick with just shorts too. And then if it's like an ascending area, then I'll just do longs. Yes. Um, so I, I'll probably, probably stay out of the long for now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those have always crushed me, so. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I mean, just the fact that Doge, like RSI is high and stuff like that is another reason for me to believe that it may go down right now for a little bit first before mm -hmm. popping back up to like the 1280. Yeah. Um, so I may, I may say it for that 10% stop loss just in case. Um, and we'll see. Just kind of watch it. You, you don't have to. If you want to, you can place it even tighter than the 10%. Like you can, you can, yeah, you can literally put it at three percent if you want, like twelve twenty, yeah. above yeah. the previous New York high. If you don't want to give it any space, and that would be very, very little. Um, yeah, because I, I, I believe it's it's gonna push, it, it's gonna push down. But that's that's how I would read it. Yeah. 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 Fingers, fingers crossed. I would, I would let any uh, any short position um, go yeah. where where it where it wants to go at the moment. Um, cool. Yeah. Well, you know what I uh, decide to do because if I if I close the short, then mm -hmm. it's going to go down. <laughs> 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 and if I stay in it, then it's going to go up. So. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what always happens, isn't it? Yeah, always. No, but, no. Yeah. I, I, thank you. I yeah, it. it's uh, you're very welcome. Um, yeah, no, I doubt, I doubt it, it'll go anywhere else, but but down. To be honest, like yeah. there might be a crazy market maker rally. I've seen plenty of those lately in XRP, but. Um, yeah, I just don't see it having the strength to to lift. Like, look, look at how much it lift. So literally, on if I'm looking at the stochastic, if I'm looking at momentum, this was the swing that it did over the past six hours, and this is how this is how much the the RSI, the stochastic, moved up, and it was a tiny swing in terms of percentages, two point five. And the one hour is already at the top. So, I, yeah, yeah. If you, again, if it makes you feel better, you don't need to give it any space. And you can wait for it to reach because yeah. there will be another another double top. So, yeah. Fingers crossed. Whatever you decide to do, good luck. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks for that. You're very welcome. Okay. Now. Let's see. Bitcoin's gonna be a lot easier than uh, Bitcoin's gonna be a lot easier than Ethereum because um, Bitcoin actually came super close to our target. No, but it went very very close. This is the four hour. Okay, let me bring this. Okay. So again, I was a little bit more uh, optimistic with the targets because I chose. I have chosen the. Give me a moment to gather my thoughts. Okay. Yes. So I chose the lower end of this swing rather than this part here. You see, this is where this is where I should have placed this line in a tighter space. And the reason why I did that was because I, again, I let myself get carried away by the volatility and think that the volatility will continue. Any range is, and you can see how I call these ranges sclerotic. So if you're looking at, for instance, a blood vessel that has sclerosis, it's lost its elasticity. So it's bigger in one place and tighter in the other, and it's got a different, uh, how can I say, texture in a in a part compared to another part so here we see nice volatility and we see a beautiful swing up 15 percent 
down 12 percent beautiful swing up beautiful swing down and also a very nice correction i remember we were trading this correction here and it gave us i don't remember the the fibs at the moment guys i'm so sorry um did it give us a 702 close to a 702 very very close a golden pocket correction but still very nice very much um predictable let's say um i think the overall was a 786 so this was the swing up one two three four five again very hard to read very straight very abrupt and then coming down for the 786 happy days there we go so we have these beautiful swings up and then all of a sudden this happens and we have an 8% swing up which you might say okay great it does a correction and I remember um, I anticipated the target of this correction quite accurately um, I I said between 702 or 786 and it reached the 702 it didn't go down to the 786 so we have this swing up very hard to read basically a one hour candle up and then some consolidation and then coming back down super and like, like who can read these this is not an impulse this is just i think this is a zigzag up on some time frame no because this is not the that, that's this is one swing up one swing down one swing up one swing down because this one is lower um and we have let me see just for the sake of the correction here a 702 not even i'm not even looking at these small corrections right now on the, on the daily for bitcoin i'm watching the daily levels just for again because they're great to trade on 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 daily basis but again i i have way bigger fish to fry here um than this five percent swing so you saw uh ethereum is eight percent this is five percent so quite a difference there because if you're to play and get sixty percent here you get thirty percent if you're to play and get sixty percent with ethereum you'd get forty four six nine forty eight eight times six i think it's forty so about five percent so it, there's a big difference in percentages and profits that's why it's it's uh, better um it's more profitable to trade ethereum right now but um bitcoin's a bit again bitcoin is um behaving how can i say it's 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 very it's easy to map out and it's easy to ta but it's harder to trade because of the variation in ranges like the range here from 15% drops to 8%, it halves. So it's like it's half of what it used to be. It's not a sideways consolidation where you expect the same range. That's why that's why I overestimated these swings because I expect the same ranges. Of course, I, I won't be making the same mistake again because I'll switch to uh, the more conservative levels next week. But again, the same, um, I've saved those lines and I've saved the targets for this post reflection because um, it's a great, it's a great learning tip to just be more conservative and find the tighter range to trade during the week if you're trading that consolidation. Because you don't want to be waiting forever and ever for your targets to be hit and then not being hit because, you know, you've... Um, placed the line a hundred dollars to the upside or to the downside so here is the range this is the range that i'm taking into account for the weekend and similarly to ethereum i have the same i for trading i have the same trading uh, ideas the same take your profit at the double bottom make the range um smaller and if you have a great position here at the top of the range hold it for the bigger fish to fry um so it's again i've i've a double top position here seventeen um thousand one hundred and thirty please uh if you have something similar 
hold it and just let it come down because I'm I'm regretting closing my short. I still have I still have <laughs> nighttime regrets uh, closing my short. I had a short somewhere. Um, where did I open it? I don't know if I opened it here at twenty two or here at twenty thousand. Somewhere along these lines, and I closed it somewhere along these lines because I thought that the bottom was in. That was it. Even though my targets were clearly showing seventeen thousand and even lower. So. You regret the things that you don't do. I would um, not following this short down to my next targets. I would deeply regret that. So I made sure I controlled the capital I put in to allow it to move freely downwards and follow it downwards. Okay, so if you're at the top of the range, great watcher. A position watch the movement of the market it's absolutely fascinating to as, as sometimes I sound very apathetic when I'm com co commentating when I'm interpreting my, my data these days because I get into this sort of like hypnotic move micro moves of the market it is fascinating to me I know that I might not express it uh, but it is absolutely fascinating to see what's happening right now. Um, so I'm controlling the capital that I put in and I make sure I have my stop loss in. So if the market makers decide to do, again, a super liquidation run to the upside, I'm okay with that. I've taken that risk. Again, what I don't want to do is close a short position that would have great potential for a 15 or a 13,000 target. Now, between the blue, uh, the blue line, <laughs> between the white line and the yellow line, um, this is our weekend range. Um, we have a, let me see where did I, I know I made a triangle somewhere with Bitcoin. Yes. So we are in a four hour structure for Bitcoin. This is, these, these levels are four hour levels. So it takes days for these levels to complete. Um, and that's why I'm very mindful right now when I'm talking to you about this four hour structure, it is a compression uh, of the price in the four hour time frame. So if we break to the upside, and we don't continue from there, we might have a slight expansion of the range, like so, with a couple more swings between those lines. If we break to the downside and we continue, again, uh, we are looking at a $14,000 uh, Bitcoin or even lower, my next level is $13,400. So this is the structure on the four hour. On the hourly, in terms of the weekend levels, we are between the 17,150 approximately and the 16,160. So between these two levels. What we can see is, again, we're in the middle of the middle right now. The one hour is, um, the one hour looks like it's pushing down on the stochastic let me just open the <laughs> the regular RSI. I love it when it does these squiggles, little squiggles, and like, what's going on here? So I will be just putting the, there we go. I will be putting a divergence line on this one hour RSI because this will tell me where we're going. Um, if you, I love, I love divergence lines on RSIs. They give me so many answers when I need the most. There they are. If you look back in the charts and you back test these divergence line lines, they are super handy in these times of sideways, um, stable coin momentum. Um, so, here we are look look how clearly this is shown here the movement down uh, same with here the movement down so from from the RSI breaking here you enter a short here it's never challenged it's like boom down you can still be in that short following the 15,000 
slash 14,000 target. Now, we are in this space this weekend. We have a divergence line coming all the way from, to, from the top here. I am just slowly, there we go, perfect. Now it's perfect and it's adjusted. So this is the divergence line. As you can see, it offers us quite a range. We can still have a mountain peak at around 18,000. Uh, I find it very unlikely, but it's still possible because it would mimic the same sclerotic <laughs> pace it had in this consolidation. Like look at these, um, how can I, well, I don't know what to call them. Um, moves. So we start with a massive retracement wave swaying up, down, and then we have this range and this range gets broken once, twice. This is a much more regular range than um, Ethereum's. I remember we were trading this range um, so it's not it's not it wasn't it wasn't as traumatic as ethereum's but still loads of swings it lasted forever and ever and it got very messy here at the end because none of the edges were met except for this wick down none of the edges was were, were met and it wasn't offering great entries to the upside or to the downside but anyways, what I mean to say is we might see something along these lines. We might see the, the 17,130 line get broken um, as it did here and then coming back for another swing. We have to check the 4-hour RSI. Again, uh, the stochastic has plenty of space to move upwards. It could move upwards. Bitcoin is right now looking to find some support on the 4 hour 20 MA let me count how many times it's tested it once twice three times four times five times it is about time for it to break it to be honest um, now what I'm looking at at the moment is if it closes this 4 hour candle above this 20 and the next 4 hour is continuing above the 20 we could be going up. Oh, sorry about that. So we could be moving up back test the 55 EMA on the 4 hour 17,230. Yes, absolutely. Mm, yeah, that could happen. That could happen it's within our range so let's see where are we going this weekend um, again I will uh, I think I've posted a four-hour structure I will post it again tomorrow to see where we are tomorrow what I believe is going to happen is again the more natural move will be to the upside so we could hit the 55 on the four hour and then come down I'm just gonna make it here like this because I'm trying to trying to color code the swings green for longs and red for shorts just like the uh, just like the by bit and then down here so these would be the two more these would be the two more <laughs> probable moves obviously where we are right now one edge needs to um, one edge needs to 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 be hit one edge uh, we need to find some support or some resistance and after that i believe we're going to continue in sideways um, again i'll explain this tomorrow on the chats in case people see some squiggles and they don't know what those are so after one or the other we will see some sideways to me, the more, again, if I weren't, and I say the more natural, because I'm looking at this with the eyes of a TA person. So if I didn't know anything about what's going on right now in the crypto world, I would be saying, 
we need to go up. We have been rejected. Uh, we have been rejected at, uh, at the lower level. We haven't even got to the lower level because the, the, the buying pressure was so high, it didn't let us reach the lower level. Over the past day or so, day, days, so since Wednesday, since Wednesday, three o'clock in the afternoon, we have been rejected here. So we've seen one, two, three, four, four bottoms right now. <laughs> that sounds so odd. We've seen four bottoms. So four, it's bottomed out four times. The most natural move would be going up. Taking into account the fundamentals, um, I'm saying that the more likely move is coming down. So I'm not even, I know that normally I would be like, okay, I want to take profit here and then I'll follow it up. That is a, a, that is a, a perfect strategy. It works. To me, um, how can I say it? Um, the, the profits I've made so far this month allow me to let this trade play out without taking profit because I don't I don't want to close my position right now. It may or may not reach to the top. Sure, my TA skills say yes, it will. But if uh, something terrible happens tomorrow, we might start dropping like there is no tomorrow and the whole uh, crypto world will do another leg down and that's it. We're in the bear market starting to consolidate. Happy days all up upwards and onwards from then onwards so that would be it that would be the the fundamental story so um again it's a it's it's um the question whether or not to take profit is all related to your balance at the end of the day your your balance by balance i mean your trading balance how much profit you've made so far can you afford to let this trade play out uh can you afford to put a, a higher stop loss on it because again I wouldn't be trading without a stop loss right now. It, there are a lot of games being played right now, a lot of liquidity being moved around so that um, literally the last the juice in the market is drained. So um, again, it is it is what it is right now. We need to stay as, as, um, as calculated as we can be. So I, I can afford to let this play out uh, because I think my position is great. I am at the top of the range and I and I let it play and I let it play and, and run its natural course. So that's the um, that's that's that, that's the Bitcoin and Ethereum story and it's quite similar. Now Bitcoin has already broken its June low. So if I'm looking at the daily the daily chart and you've seen this daily chart so many times uh, so if if we're looking at the daily chart, we have hit a level of support here, right on the line. I had this line for months, for months. I remember. There it is. There it is. Um, it's the it's it's an intermediary level of support and resistance. We still haven't reached the stronger support and resistance, which is here, the previous high at thirteen thousand seven hundred. To me, this this is a biggie. This is a biggie if it breaks this one. So we'll we'll have to see. Now, if we close, you will hear me. You will hear me say this um, over and over again because I needed to repeat it to myself a lot of times before I got it into my head. If we close Friday with a move down, we're probably going to be continuing the move over the weekend. If something, if some news comes out tomorrow that's really bad, there will be a lot of selling pressure during the weekend. Um, this is no mystery, no surprise there. I'm not telling you anything new that you might not think of, but I'm just I'm just reminding you of it. Now, if we break the previous low at fifteen thousand, you can see how like it's absolutely fascinating how the algorithm is planning for these ranges. Because if I am to measure this range here and the breaking of this range 
you know for ethereum it's the same level this one is a little bit lower a lower low for it for bitcoin here i want to say ethereum a lower low for bitcoin here would not only expand this range and you know i have that crazy empirical theory however much we broke out here let me just make it we're gonna break down here that that's that's my own i'll call it Mihaly's law of momentum and i have back tested it on tens of channels i don't want to say thousands or hundreds tens of channels it breaks out upwards then it breaks out downwards at the same rate the same pace so it's uh, it's it will it will happen this will happen this expansion will happen and uh, i i am looking very curiously at the charts this weekend to see if if it will happen like that anyways so it's really good to see how the algorithm plays uh, this because uh, uh, the, tr the trade would make a lower low and a lower low would mean again a lot of pressure on bitcoin as an asset to hold its weight and not break down to the next level which i believe will happen this is the more likely move but we can see both directions and i'll keep you guys posted if i see any sort of move like today i saw that the pivot point was being challenged and it it was rejected sydney did it challenge it again uh, right now we are above the pivot point we're above the daily open so technically we would have the chance to go up to the m3 but we are not uh, we're not there yet we're not there yet and um, we haven't yet broken the psychological low so there's a lot of there's a lot of resistance here um, on this it's had one two three four five five tries to break the psychological low let's see what it's gonna do let's see if the one hour momentum can push through um, at the moment it's printing a bullish pattern a, sorry a bearish pattern with an M formation a double top formation we have a double top uh, formation and an M formation across the sessions last night Tokyo um, Sydney and Hong Kong and today's London and New York so here we are in a double top situation now fingers crossed we move down I hope you are in a short um, uh, in a short in a short in a short position and you'll be making profits on the way down if you are in a long and you started out here secure um, your profits or put a stop loss make sure you don't lose them I don't think you have any reversal vectors on the 15 minute yet but I'll just double check no reversal at the moment no reversal vectors at the moment there was a um, a cell a cell signal here but it was only for the swing and then it stopped because I think that was a zigzag swing up so no reversal um, divergence at the moment yet on the 15 minutes so if you are if you started a long position earlier on um, again secure your profits and and watch watch how this goes um, it might go up to let me recap the levels 17,000 let's say 150 or push down one more time to 16,100 and that's it that's it from me um, long story short the DXY looks like it's hitting a support level and it will come up to retrace to the 20 uh, MA on the day over the next 10 7 to 10 days so we'll see some movement over the next 7 to 10 days and if the dxy pumps we know that crypto dumps um we have yet to see the third leg in this bear market and once we see that third leg down happy days we are starting to accumulate sideways and it will be a long maybe five to six months of something along these lines happening up and down up and down and all we can wish for is a nice range to trade up and down with limit orders with 702s it will be a walk in the park after this roller coaster of a ride 
in terms of volatility. So that's it for me. Uh, do you guys have any questions about Bitcoin? No questions. Silence is an answer too. So thank you for tonight. Um, I will. Uh, I won't. I won't chat to you guys tomorrow um, live, but I will be posting in the morning, and then I'll see you um, in the evening around New York closing time. I'll be posting to see how we close the se the session, and then how uh, how the weekend is looking, depending on how we close the the session on Friday. And then I'll see you at the weekend because I'll be watching for my short positions and how they're doing. Good luck trading. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you, Mahela. You're very welcome.